Hi everyone, this is lecture series 4, Introduction to IoT, dealing with IoT sensor introduction. Come let's go into the video. Please do like, share, subscribe and comment. So, a small introduction of what sensor is. So here, the basic signs of sensing and actuating is called as transduction. Sensing is nothing but, see when one touches you, some type of sense in our body gets activated and you turn towards that person, right? So, there is two kinds of action done there, sensing and also actuating. Sensing is touching the skin, actuating is you turning back to the touch person, right? So, the same way, whatever application now we are uh, seeing in, in the real world, it is based on sensing and actuation. So, this basic science of sensing and actuation, it is based on one process that is known as transduction. So, what is transduction now? Transduction is nothing but it is the process of converting one form of energy into another form. That is electrical energy can be converted into mechanical energy, mechanical energy can be converted into electrical energy. So any form of energy can be converted to any form of energy. So that process is known as transduction. So how this process takes place? See we tell that for sensing process we use sensors, actuation process we use actuators, same way for Conversion of energy, we use processes called as transduction, but the word, we, the device that we use for converting one form of energy to the other form of energy is known as transducer. So, electrical energy, mechanical energy, light energy, chemical energy, whatever kind of energy can be converted into any other form of opposite energy. Right. So, you can see different kinds of sensors. See, alcohol sensor. In uh, you, you would have observed, see, uh, during peak festival times, police will be having some mission in that. And when people are driving cars and coming, police will ask them to blow in that uh, device, right? So, uh, some type of sensors like al alcohol sensor will detect whether the person is drunk or not, right? Ultrasonic sensor, IR optical sensor, LDR sensor, gas sensor, gyroscopic sensor, PIR sensor. So, see, there are n number of sensors. With rain sensor, we can detect when the rain is going to come. And with ultrasonic sensor, we can detect whether any object is in front of us. So, different sensors are used for different purposes. And next is, these are the different kinds of actuators available. So, sensors will sense the data and it will give to the actuators and these are the actuators which will perform mechanical action, actuation, actions will be performed, DC motor, once ultrasonic sensor detects something, some objects in front of, front of a person and then the input is given to the DC motor, the motor will start vibrating in one hand and then tell us some object is before us. DC motor, DC gear motor, RC servo motor. So these are the many kinds of actuators which do action based on the sensor's output. And in this you will be seeing about the definition of sensors, actuators and transducers. See what is the definition of transducer? It converts one form of energy into another. Sensor is various forms of energy into electrical signals. And actuators is nothing but it converts electrical signals into various forms of other mechanical energy or whatever it is. Domain. In what domain it is? That is transducer can act both as sensor also and actuator also. But sensor will be acting, it is an input transducer. What is the output transducer then? Actuator is the output transducer. What is the function each does? Transducer, what, uh, what function it does? It function as a sensor or as an actuator, but it can do only one at a time, not both at the same time. And sensor, what function it do, uh, does? It get, get inputs from the external world, environmental world, and those inputs are converted into some fine some form of signals and actuators what they do it converts all those signals into mechanical or electrical outputs 
so there are some examples for each and every sensor see whatever uh, kinds of sensor we saw that will be the examples under sensor and whatever kind of actuators we have seen that will be the examples of actuators so next now we have seen that sensor is a device that will get the input from the external world and respond to that kind of input so if there is any change in the environment if there is a temperature change then the temperature sensor will detect the change and deploy it in the circuit that it is being designed so if there is any change it will get the input act accordingly that is what sensor does so sensor is sensitive and insensitive to something where what it is sensitive is it is sensitive to measured property that is if a temperature sensor is affixed in some devices it will sense only the temperature if the temperature sensor is affixed in the room it will sense only the temperature in the room it will not act as a humidity sensor or any other uh, property it will not be measuring so it is sensitive and again sensor we tell it as insensitive so it is insensitive to any other property that is if it is designed to detect a light it is designed to detect a light it is insensitive even though when you go and uh, keep a temperature uh, uh, to keep uh, if you keep a uh, temperaturing uh, device temperature high temperature device in front of light uh, uh, sensor it will not detect the temperature it will become it will act as an insensitive device that's all and here you can see some simple sensing operation see you have an environment where the uh, house is catched with fire now the event has happened fire event has happened now the temperature sensor will detect the temperature around the house that there is some abnormal thing that is happening in the environment so after this temperature sensor senses that it processes the all the datas and it is given to the central hub so if a fire is detected it has to call for some emergency to clear that so it will be sending to that particular agency such that these people will monitor the sensor's output and they will immediately reach that place this is simple operation of a sensor it will sense process and monitor next is so these sensors it is designed with various requirements based on power requirements based on sensor output and based on property to be measured so first one power requirements why we need a power see some sensors we can say it as active sensors and passive sensor see when you take active sensor it doesn't require any external power to be power to that sensor it itself will sense the device sense some changes in the environment and give you that is known as active sensors but there are some sensor which require external separate power sources to be fed to that sensor then only it will start sensing the changes in the environment so these two kind of sensors is required so based on the power requirements such sensors are designed say for example here i have given photodiode this will convert the light into electrical pulse so photodiode whatever uh, electricity or whatever light you put it in front of photodiode it will detect the light and convert it into electrical impulses right next is based on power requirements so based on power requirements you can see uh, you can tell that as a passive sensors passive sensors what it does is it requires some external mechanism to power up right how active sensors uh, it, it, it doesn't require any external power passive requires a passive sensor requires external mechanism to power up so these are the the see uh, here thermistor is used to measure the temperature of a device so if only if thermistor is present in the temperature sensor device then it will detect the temperature and next is based on output signals so based on output is it is classified as analog and digital so if it is analog sensor what it will do it will generate an output signal or voltage okay if it is generating output signal what it is there but the output signal will be proportional to the quantity that is measured if it is based on time it will be proportional to the quantity as the time increases the sensor value should also increase 
it is proportional to the property it is getting measured so here the output of the sensor will help in deciding some additional components that has to be integrated to a system to produce an analog signals so for example you can give temperature speed pressure displacement strain all these are quantities which is continuous and categorized based on analog signals next will be your digital signal so digital signal obviously you know it is logic 1 or logic 0 if it is logic 1 it is on logic 0 means off switch on and off will be your best example that i can give you here i have given an example of thermometer or a thermocouple which is used for measuring the temperature it shows in a digital values right so this output the logic 0 or logic 1 this will be discrete time digital representation it can be either amplitude or based on orientation whatever it is so it will uh, it will produce produce an output signal or voltages and based on measured property it is divided into scalar and vector so here scalar quantity is nothing but it gives an output which will be proportional to the magnitude of the quantity so if if it is a scalar quantity it should be proportional to the magnitude so what can, so it, it is actually a crucial thing to decide when number of sensor are present see in an environment there are n number of sensors used for measuring things and if it is a scalar quantity it it, it is actually a crucial in designing the number of sensors in for implementing an iot device so when it is a vector sensor it is affected by that is see scalar sensor is proportional to magnitude here you have to consider both magnitude and also direction so magnitude and direction what comes in your mind magnetic compass which is available in the seas it will tell you which is east west see when you get into sea you you will not obviously know which is east which is west and north and south direction so that or vector sensors gyroscope will be electronic gyroscope is an vector sensors which will detect the orientation and keep indicating the people who is traveling through c right hope you have understood this and finally we will be seeing about the functional block of typical sensor so see you have a press processor where sensor is feeding the data these are the kind of sensor that we use if it is analog signal you can convert into digital signal and your sensor will have uh, inbuilt adc and after that that output is given to the processor the processor uses all these modems wi-fi bluetooth zigbee lora all these kind of signals to process the data and monitor the data and this after processing the data to perform the action it is fed to the actuators actuators can be actions can be pneumatic electrical mechanical or hydraulic and it is having dc ac converter power converters which is feeding power to the processor so this is the typical sensor node in iot hope you have understood stay tuned for the next lecture series thank you